All right, here's some proof of concept. Um, here we got a crystal. Okay. Boom. Random crystal. Uh, this is a silicone mat. You can find these in your <laughs> um, dish washing aisle. It, it holds soap. I found it in the soap aisle, I think, a long time ago. But you don't need this mat. I just use it to hold it in place. Uh, we got a 3D printed ring shank. Okay. And I have a piece of copper wire. And then I have the 3D printed resin that was already used to print the 3D object. All I'm doing this is sticking this wire into this big pad and getting a drip of it. So you can see how it drips off of the wire. Good. Okay. So um, along with this, I have a UV flashlight. Boom. Okay, and uh, we are going to stick that crystal to, or make a custom setting for that. This will be a temporary setting until I get something a little bit. Um, if you're using 3D resin, I would highly recommend wearing gloves and not wearing gloves. I'm kind of watching where I'm grabbing. Okay, so there's the crystal, it's lined up. Boom, hit it with the UV light. You'll feel an incredible heat coming off of it. And there we go, it's mounted to the shank. And if you want to gap fill it, all you do is have to do a series of drops in the area. And then hit it with like the UV light. Boom. And just repeat that process over and over until you have a buildup that you're happy with. Um, what's that mean? Well, it really means that uh, super glue and the whole concept of super glue baking soda. Sorry, super glue baking soda. Pretty cool, but I don't have to put that in my bath anymore. Now you are going to still use uh, kind of a paint, so you're still going to have to use safer solutions to bridge the gap between the crystal and here. But other than that. Boom. And you can see where it filled in quite nicely. And then the acetone and uh, graphite goes right over the top of everything there. And then you would put your uh, safer solution paint on there. In fact, What's really cool about the workflow is it's dry right now, so I can go right into the graphite uh, acetone mix. I don't have to wait at all. I can go right into it. Just have to set it up. Because the UV flashlight was enough to harden it to the point where it could accept the graphite. And in fact, I've noticed that if this stuff gets a little too hard, like if you like 3D print your object and you wait two, three weeks, <laughs> um, it doesn't accept the graphite as easy. At least that's the ones I noticed when I printed them at work. Let's get some of that. And this is where you really need gloves so you can 
not stick to that. Or a pair of tweezers. Let's do tweezers. Just move the tweezers by going like that. There we go. I'll just let that dry. I do this to let it dry, so I just kind of put it on a wire that's dangling this way. You can see the entrance to the wire right here. I just slide it onto that wire. So this form of compositioning also works with other 3D objects that you print. For example, I have this 3D printed carnation that I scanned. Scanned a carnation flower and 3D printed it. Um, I got this little tiny raven skull top. And what I would really like to do is put the carnation in its mouth. So I just kind of lay the one on top of the other kind of like that. Boom. Get out my thing. Get out my wire. <laughs> A few drops on there. I'll figure out something maybe better than a wire sooner or later, but for right now it works. Alright, so that's now part of the composition. You can see that's fused together quite naturally. Okay, and then uh, if I want to put the beak on there, line up the beak. This is where um, a little dexterity is needed. It is small. Holy crap. Next time I'll print something bigger. <laughs> okay, so it's in its mouth. I don't like how the jaw is offset just a little bit. So, I'm going to take that and trim it just a little bit. Trimmers. Oh, for trimmers? Yeah, let me show you that little trick. Um, the best trimmers for this stuff is... I don't know who has toenails this thick, but these are toenail trimmers. Okay, and you can flip this little thing up. Found them in my grocery store, right? I bet they really thought... Like, holy crap, dude. Probably got some problems if you're buying those. Now, I've been using them for uh, trimming 3D objects. So, there we go. It's in his beak now. Again, I just kind of grab some of uh, my 3D goo and I'll put it in the joints. Boom, boom. Hit it with some light. And then maybe just a smidge right there to hold the jaw into place. Boom. Alright, so there's my composition. 
uh, a little tiny raven holding a carnation. Just got to do some trimming right there. Wow, so small. All right, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, hey, I, he forgot that jump ring. Really? Did I? Yes, I did. I did forget the jump ring. I don't know if this is going to be a good wearable. It, this is just a good demo to show you that things can be stuck together very quickly without too much effort. So. And you can use different gauge wires um, to get different thicknesses of, or different drops. Just like that, and then I can use a different gauge wire to get a different drop count, maybe a thicker drop in that area now. All right, that was it. Got a wacky little wearable. Not sure if the balance is gonna be good because this is gonna be heavy on this one side, but that's essentially how you stick things together. All right, now that's my proof of concept.